when my new film's done and my book I'm working on is done, I'm going to shift gears, maybe even away from filmmaking, maybe away from everything, and just form organizations and groups, kind of like We Are Change or 9-11 Truth. But we, we need a 9-11 Truth or a We Are Change to go out and talk about eugenics and give people their own quotes, their own documents, and warn people they're poisoning your water. Here's their own statements from the head of the federal government. You know, here's the, here's the, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we know they're doing it. I mean, nothing else matters. You know, I can't go to a movie now. I can't um, go out to eat now at a nice restaurant. I can't even go with my children to swim in a spring or a local pool. They have a lot of great springs here in Central Texas. I, I can't go camping. I can't go see family. I can't do anything. All I can do is know they're poisoning the water and the air and killing us by design, and the White House admits it. The White House head of technology I mean, how do I go on and act like everything's normal? How do I go on and, oh, yeah, they're killing us. Hey, did you see the tennis match this weekend? I mean, I, I'm i the normal one. I'm normal. And I got the Wall Street Journal and Psychology Today and other foreign magazines and newspapers call me or they show up here. And I'm giving them government documents about the plans to exterminate us. And they just don't even look at them. They go, oh, I don't believe that. This isn't a radio show. This isn't about having fun and being an entertainer and and and, and up here getting attention and, 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 ooh, being the big radio guy. There was a little bit of that when I started out 14 years ago in 1995. All of that worldliness is burned away. Sometimes I try to get in a good mood and have fun because I'm human, and I'm embarrassed I'm embarrassed when I make fun of somebody. I'm embarrassed when I get off into a side issue. I catch myself up here screwing around at night when I'm working on a film because it's hard to work 16, 17, 18 hours and stay serious. And I'll be, I'll, I'll look at my watch and for 30 minutes we start shooting the, shooting the bull about women or fishing or hunting. And I catch myself watching Brock Lesnar in there, you know, on a rip off the web twice and watching deer hunting videos and I look up and an hour's passed and I'm like, oh, I better go fight the New World Order. So I understand you want to divert and distract and not face this and not deal with it. I understand that you want to have a life. I'm sorry. We're not going to fix this till people make this important and put it front and center. What I'm saying is people have been trained to kind of accept highways and roads and lights and power and computers and clothes and devices as if they just grow on trees and as if nobody's steering the world and you and that you just react to the world as a spectator and that you just kind of go through life and drive your car and go to the grocery store and go home and take care of your kids and family and go out and have fun, and it's kind of like a wonderland. It isn't a wonderland. They're building FEMA camps all around us. They're openly saying they want to kill us. They're openly setting up a police state. And I'm going to go over it in the next hour with Paul Watson. Then we've got uh, a guest coming on in the next hour with some big breaking news on 9-11, and then G. Edward Griffin's coming on as well. I'll get him to talk about eugenics and a host of other issues. He's been fighting for 45 years, a great icon in the liberty movement. So that's in the last hour today, joining us from his home in California. But right now, uh, for this hour and a little bit into the next, Paul Joseph Watson, because he can calmly and collectively go over his detailed 18-page report with then screenshots and links to the book itself. Go read the book. You know, we don't just put a text version up there because people will deny it. Here is his textbook written by him that he co-authored with Bush's, one of Bush's favorite technology people. And everything we claim in this article is footnoted. We're, and, and, and so Paul Watson's now going to go over this. And, and let me explain something, folks. When I start griping and complaining about Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson's death, second biggest story of century, Not the million dead Iraqis, not 9-11, not global financial meltdown, not the Beijing Olympics, not Hurricane Katrina, not Pope John Paul II dying, not the tsunami, but Michael Jackson dying. That's why this is sick. That's why this is sick. Folks, 
When I get up here and I talk about diversions and distractions, I mean, it is insane. They on record, here's just one point of thousands, and this is why my head spins. I have seen a whole bunch of mainstream news articles from Reuters and AP and others. AP every year does this detailed report where they test the water of over 100 major cities. And Dallas and Las Vegas and L.A. and other major cities had higher levels of Prozac type serotonin reuptake inhibitors and other drugs in it, as well as birth control, female birth control hormone, than was physically possible from runoff and sewage. And then they've done other studies, and they don't say what this means in the article, though it's clear, two plus two, and then they don't tell you the answer. You know it's four. That aquifers and water supplies and even small town supplies that don't have runoff going into it have the female hormones for sterilization for birth control. That's what, that's what they give you is the hormone, the pregnancy hormone, the hormone that says I'm pregnant. It's a combo of those. And the woman doesn't have babies. So it's not a sterilization. It's a blocking. They're putting that in there and they're putting Prozac in. Then I can show you the Japanese government ju just on this one subject for hours saying they want to put Prozac in the water. And then I can show you UN documents saying put Prozac in the water. And then movies like Serenity with predictive programming where the government puts the Prozac into the atmosphere. But then 1% have the side effect of turning into Reavers. The issue is then I can show you how they're throwing it in your face all over culture. I've got films from the 70s where they're talking about we're going to have a world government and exterminate the people. I can play you a 1967 David Bowie song where he's talking about openly how the elite want to exterminate us and sterilize us to control the future and control life extension. I mean, David Bowie knew this in 67. I'm not telling you some secret. This thing is all the elite talk about, all they do. World government is only the means to the end to carry out the extermination. And there's thousands of points, thousands of these points. I can go right down the line on every one of these points, and I can back up every single issue I say. I could go on for 10 hours just on stuff in the water and where they've been caught doing it. You understand they're jacking your water with the Prozac, the uh, the uh, basic Prozac molecule, a, a Prozac-type uh, drug. Do you understand they're putting hormones in it to sterilize you? To, to block you being able to get pregnant? Do you understand? This They're doing this, and this is what we know about. They're now saying they want to put statins in the drugs and make two-year-olds take statins, which screw up your liver. Folks, this is real. Let's go to Paul Watson. Paul, I'm going to try to sit back and shut up and just write notes as you talk, but I want you to calmly, because I, I, I tend to go down rabbit trails at each point of this, go over this this bastard. Uh, Paul Watson joining us from the United Kingdom, which is the command base uh, and the foundation of the planetary eugenics movement. Paul Watson. Hello, Alex. Good to be back. Good to have you. Yeah, the the main shocker that came out of the rediscovery of this book, Eco-Science, written by Obama's top science and technology advisor in 77, and a book which... Holdren is happy to be photographed with in his own library. As the, we've got that picture on top of the article that we posted on Saturday. He's never backed away from the statements made in the book. And I mean, that, that was the original claim that deniers tried to say, oh, this was 30 plus years ago. No, in his first press conference, he displayed it behind him. It's, <laughs> it's all by itself right there in the shelf behind him. Oh, look. Oh. But people oh. will... You know, they'll try to find a reason to deny it because it is that shocking that when Front Page magazine did a story about it back in February, it got basically no attention because people didn't believe it because they didn't have actual screenshots of the book and segments of the pages. Well, plus David Horowitz is a neocon who calls for torture, and so he's so discredited and routinely attacks us that no one takes him serious. But when we broke it, it did get taken serious. Right. So if it's in Horowitz's publication, then it can be skewed into a left-right issue, which isn't the case, as you've said, because Republicans were involved in this as well, like George H.W. Bush. But the main shocker contained in eco-science, from my perspective and from many people's perspective, I would guess, 
is the part where Holdren and his co-authors call for, propose the idea. Now, they're making these proposals, they're committing them to paper. The other thing I hear is, oh, just because they wrote about them doesn't mean they advocate them. Well, if you no, this book, is a, this book is a treatise, textbook level, 1,100 page battle plan. It, and it's putting forward proposals with which to uh, carry out population reduction. These are proposals. The most shocking one, quote, adding a sterilant to drinking water or staple food. And we'll get into why that is already happening. And right listen, now. if you're a black man, if you're a white man, if you're Hispanic, if you're Asian, if you're a cop, if you're a school teacher, all of you are being hit by these people. And then wonder why you have this idea in your mind that everybody knows there's too many people. Everybody knows we've got to do this. You've been programmed and didn't even know it.